Maybe it's because I was a business undergrad before I became a teacher, or maybe it's because I have an Asian mom, but I've always felt the need to be teaching and learning about money and financial literacy with myself and with my students. Unfortunately, as important as financial education is, it loses in the struggle for time, resources, and support that teachers face. So in my case, I've kind of had to sneak it in there when I was an elementary teacher with my class's usual reward system. And this is your basic carrot and stick technology for children, where you can give them currency and they can buy something at my store, which sells uh, stickers or little toys. But let me tell you of the fireworks that can come from such a simple idea. Kids do so much more than just count or calculate correct change. They become entrepreneurs, and they set up competing businesses to mine. They learn how to split profits with business partners and hire staff and lobby for higher wages. They even contemplate counterfeiting. And they set up banking systems when they perceive that their growing piles of cash requires better management. And I've seen this with elementary aged students. So you can imagine that an exercise done like this every school year until students graduate would surely help solidify a nice foundation for financial literacy. Yet, in the US, for example, fewer than half of all high schools require any type of finance or economics course in order to graduate. And this at a time when financial illiteracy is a pandemic in our world, including the developed world. So in the one year that I get to have with my classroom, I have managed to see them even philosophize about what money means to them. Like one student I had, Martin, who would accumulate this pile of cash, but he would never want to buy anything, right up till the end of the school year. And when I asked him why not, he said, well, he managed to enjoy himself anyway, and quite frankly, he was never really interested in my stickers. Which was great, because here is a kid who has refused to let anyone, including me, monetize his enjoyment of learning. And consumerism did not factor in his happiness as a nine-year-old. And I had <laughs> something I could learn from retail therapy. Uh, and I had another student in the awkward position of having lost a box of cash containing the wealth of seven of his classmates. And there was drama because they all accused him of embezzling their money. Well, I'm not going to name him, but we had to sit this one down and talk it out because uh, we, and we had to realize that this was horrible, but at least it was just a game at school. And we would have never been able to take the money with us anyway once the school year ended. And I contrast this with my student, Stacia, who held on tight to a box of cash containing real money, uh, quarters and dollars that we earned in a grade six garage sale to pay for our graduation trip. And she knew how important this would be for our class, which lived in a particular socioeconomic situation. But my favorite story is of when I visited my student Trevor in the hospital, and I presented him this giant get well soon card signed by all his classmates. And they also sent along two sweaty, crinkly 50 bills as a gift. And he received this fake money so preciously, like, <gasps> and that's because in our simple economy, this could only represent at least two weeks of 25 students doing their work on time, not fighting, lining up, doing everything right, all for him. And he knew exactly what that meant. Financial illiteracy 
is like the wax in our wings. And the higher we fly with technology, innovation, and progress, the farther we're going to have to fall. We need to meet with classroom teachers because classrooms are the boardrooms deciding the future of our world. And we need to change this financial illiteracy situation around in one generation. Thank you.